Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join together this editor and plugin in Holy Macrimony, as this is Tim with Motion VFX to show you our new M Wedding 2 plugin. This pack comes with some really clean features as well as some vintage feels. It's definitely distinctive from the original. So let's walk down the aisle to Resolve and take a look. Now once you've installed M Wedding 2 from M Installer, we can open Resolve and go right into our Effects tab and make sure Toolbox is highlighted. Then we can just click this magnifying glass and type in M Wedding 2 and that'll give us all of our available effects, overlays, and transitions. There are 56 different elements in here, along with five different LUTs that I'll show you at the end. And we can view each category individually if we click on Video Transitions, Titles, or Effects. And you can go into each category by hitting this drop down, hitting the Motion VFX drop down, scroll down to M Wedding 2. And you can do that for each respective category. Now let's start with applying an intro here. Now the interesting thing about our intros is that they actually require multiple clips at a time. So let's go ahead and just drag this onto a clip and see what happens. We'll see it says built for fusion clip with four sources. So that means we need to make a fusion clip that has four clips inside of it. I'm actually going to use the intro six as it only requires two. So I'm just going to take this clip over here, bring it over and drag it so that it matches the length of the first one. And then I'm going to highlight them and then make a fusion clip. Now let's go ahead and drag intro six onto it. And when we play it, we can see that it uses both clips at different times throughout the fusion clip. It automatically creates the effect for us. Now let's go ahead and just change a couple things about this effect. We can go in here. Let's go ahead and remove the desaturation by dragging the saturation knob back up a bit. And let's go up into our title and let's change the text to something like the best day. And maybe we can increase the tracking a little bit or adjust the line spacing. It's all to taste, but I think that looks quite nice. And let's play that back one more time just to see if that's what we like. And I like that a lot. The next thing we have are our overlay effects. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the intro on here. And let's just go ahead and add double exposure. And this one functions similar to a Lumic here. So basically what I want to do is have the piano end up inside of this jacket. So I can switch which one's on top. And I'm just going to go ahead and soften that range a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of blur and then push some of that color back into it as well. And that creates some nice keying and blending effects. Now we also have these really nice flares that we can add as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off our search, go to effects and add an adjustment clip. I'm going to place it over top of our clip here and let's pull this back up. And let's just go ahead and add flare one as an example. Now flares are great because you can move them on top of any clip with an adjustment clip. And maybe when we want to change these colors a bit, maybe we want to make this a little more of a red tint. And on the other end of the gradient, maybe we want it closer to blue. And we can modify the texture details a little bit here. Let's give it a little bit less contrast to make it a little more soft. And that gives us some nice flair and color to our composition. And if we wanted this to stay on through the whole duration of the adjustment clip without fading on and off, we can just uncheck these in and out boxes and it'll stay consistent through the entire clip. And we can put this flare anywhere we want and we can actually quickly change what kind of flare we want. So let's go ahead and just add flare number two here. And we want to kind of match the flare that's already going on in this shot. So we can go ahead to our flare controls. Let's just bring down this flare opacity a little bit. And maybe get the color just a little bit closer. And we'll go ahead and deselect those in and out boxes as well. Go ahead and just modify or seethe a little bit. See if there's a different part of the texture that we would prefer. Change our scaling a little bit to make it a little less streaky. And we've got some beautiful complementary flares. 
Now there are other things that we can do to make this really pop as well. We can add a reflection. Let's go ahead and throw that on the adjustment clip. And maybe we need to move the original source clip a bit. So we're just going to slide it over. And then if we go back into our adjustment clip into the effects, let's go ahead and pull up the reflection. And let's just move this mirror position. And maybe blur it out some more. And we can bring down our contrast on the fast noise so we can really soften that reflection look. We can adjust our seethe and see if there's any better texture we want as well. And I'm liking that. And we can keep the in and out points on the reflection and let's just play this back and see how it looks. Very nice. Now let's say we wanted to do a little bit more of a subtle effect. I'm going to go ahead and reset the position and I'm going to take off the reflection and we're going to add a vignette blur. And maybe this is a little bit strong of noise and the blur isn't exactly positioned where we want it. So let's go ahead and hit our grain control first. Well, let's just go ahead and bring that grain quite a bit down just to minimize it. And let's go into our vignette controls. Now we need to increase the height first so it's not touching his hair so much and maybe decrease the width. And we can also go into our footage adjustment controls and we can just modify the color just a little bit to reduce the strength of that heavy yellow. And we'll go ahead and deselect in and out. And as we play this back, the vignette blur adds a really nice center focus to our subject. Now next we're going to look at our split screens. And our split screens will also require fusion clips. So let's go ahead and set that up. I'm just gonna drag this over here, shorten this up, and I'm just going to make this into a fusion clip. And let's add the split screen to here. And what's nice about the split screens is it'll automatically do the animation and placements for you. We can also change which side it'll animate from. So if we select right, it'll come in from the right side and exit right. We can go ahead and do a three-way split screen. So let's go ahead and just add this on. And then let's go ahead and add this clip to it as well. We'll highlight all of these and make them into a fusion clip. And let's go ahead and add the split screen four. Now it actually kind of put it where we wanted to, but if we wanted to change where the clips were located, we could just select here. And let's say we just wanted to see the mid range of everybody. We could just bring this clip up. And we can also adjust the inner scale if there's something we really want to hone in on in one of the shots. I think that looks quite nice. We can also change the direction that it comes in from, either the top or the bottom. We'll just choose the bottom for this one. And if we preview this, we get a nice clean three-way split screen. We can also do this with stills as well. So if we have four clips in our timeline, we can just highlight all of them. Once again, make it a fusion clip. And we'll just add our first split screen effect here. And when we play it back, we have a nice little slideshow. So split screens are a really nice touch and have a lot of flexibility. Now we can move on to placeholders. Now I'm just gonna quickly throw this on here. And what's nice about the placeholders is each of them have a drop zone that you can insert an image onto or a logo. So if we go into our inspector, we can go into the drop zone controls and we can just go browse for a photo here. Oh, who's that? We can go to the drop zone inner scale to make sure that it fits within the boundaries. And we can change the text if we go under our header controls, we can change the text to say something like, let us make your day special. In all caps, of course. And we can scale this up to make it a little bit easier to see. And we can go in and change the text color as well if we wanted to add a little bit more of a yellow tint to match the decor. And we can do that on the other one as well. And we also have some unique titles as well. We can go ahead and delete that for now. And let's just scroll down here to all of our titles that we have. Let's just go ahead and throw this one on here. We can see it animate on like so. And we can also add a description underneath that so we can offset it a little bit. And then that way, when you play it back, we have the title pop up first along with the description that fades in directly after. And we can go into these titles. If we go to our title controls, we can type something new like 
becoming one. And then change their names if maybe it's not Richard, it's Adam. And of course we can change the color of these texts as well. Like let's say, let's give it a little bit more of a beige color, maybe slightly desaturated a little bit. And then if we want the other one to be that same color, we can just copy this code here, go into this color, and then double click and paste. And we can either move these titles individually or move them as one. And some titles have a description underneath them as well, like this one. So we can change the title to something like the adventure starts here. And we have individual description controls that so we can control each characteristic on how we want each part of the description to be. And we can even change the date here. And if we drop another one in, this highlights the date in the next clip. And then we have transitions. To better see the transition, I'm just going to remove what's currently here right now, just to make this a little bit easier to see. Let's just go ahead and add a blur transition here. And if we play it back, it gives a nice clean blur transition. And by default, and by default, it's a little aggressive, so we can reduce the amount of blur that happens on the transition. And I think I like that a little bit more. We also have other ones that we can control too, like if we do this brighten transition. By default it gets pretty bright, so what we can do is we can just bring down this brightness amount and just give it a little bit of a flash on the transition. And each one of these transitions are customizable. And then of course we have some LUTs that we can use on our footage. Now if we hop on over to the color page, we can actually find those in our LUTs tab. If we click on LUTs, we can go down to Motion VFX and scroll down to M Wedding 2. And then we got five new LUTs we can use. Now keep in mind, these LUTs were designed for Rec. 709. So if you are using a color managed workflow, just make sure you are outputting Rec. 709 before you put this LUT into place. But we can hover over our LUTs and see exactly what each of them look like. And we can just double click to apply it to the node that we have selected. You can also find these LUTs if you right click on the node, go to LUT, go to Motion VFX, M Wedding 2, and then we have our five options listed here. These new LUTs add a touch of elegance to make them feel enchanting and timeless. See what I did there? Now if you haven't picked up the first M Wedding Pack plugin, I highly suggest you checking it out as it makes a good two pack combo. I I'm not a boxer. So don't forget to check out that pack and also leave a comment on what you thought of this pack or any general questions that you may have as it helps with engagement. <laughs> Get it? Because it's a, it's a wedding pack. I'm okay. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope it helps you as well. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.